In this video, we spend seven days on a Global Expedition Vehicles Adventure XT and answer the question, what's it like to live in one of these amazing overlanding vehicles? We visit six amazing destinations, including the Chattahoochee National Forest, north of Dahlonega, Georgia, Umi Kalola Falls in Georgia, the Pigeon Mountain Wilderness Management Area, Old Fort Camp in Tennessee with one of the prettiest waterfalls I have had the pleasure of enjoying, Real Foot Lake in Tennessee where I take a spirited boat ride through the cypress swamps of Real Foot Lake and we wind up on the shores of the Buffalo River in Arkansas at a popular dispersed camping location called the Gravel Bar. Well, I figured the best way to introduce you to the interior of this truck is to make a little breakfast. To start with, the truck has 90 gallons of fresh water heated by a Wabasto T90 diesel heater that is plumbed into the auxiliary fuel tank. The cooktop is a two burner Kenyan induction cooktop that's powered by the Masterbolt battery system and 3000 watt inverter. Been watching too much Peter McKinnon when you throw a copy montage in the mix. The truck is also equipped with a Vitrofrigo Marine Jor style refrigerator that performs flawlessly on 12 volts and draws minimal power. I love the fact that the truck has enough power to run a toaster because you know I love my toasted bagels in the morning. There is a generous amount of storage with locking drawers and cupboards throughout. There was more than enough capacity to house everything I needed for this seven day adventure. The dinette is spacious with seating for four and two Laguna table mounts that offers ample table space and can be adjusted into a variety of configurations. Well, breakfast was yummy, but it was time to hit the road and get this adventure rolling. I was excited to get on the trail today. I had no real destination in mind yet. I just knew I wanted to spend some time with this truck on the back roads of the Chattahoochee National Forest. The roads were curvy little switchbacks that ran along several ridge tops in the forest. 
all in all that day, I think I only put on about 50 miles, but you know, they were mostly on the dirt. And that's really all I wanted to do. You okay? Oh yeah, I'm just on the phone. <laughs> that got off work. That is nice. It's a rig. That's a badass pencil. Yep. All right, see ya. When you get top of the hill, turn left. All right, see ya. I decided I'd better start looking for a spot. So I got on Onyx off-road maps and I found a significant waterfall not too far away. So I decided to head in that direction. It was in a very fancy state park, but I didn't hook up well, because I didn't need to. And I was in a sense testing the long-term capabilities of the uh, 10,560 watt hours of battery, along with the 1200 watts of solar producing about 60 amps and peak sun and 200 amps of secondary alternator power. And believe me, never along this entire trip was I hurting for power. Well, I got to Amicalola State Park and had heard there's a fancy lodge up on top of the hill and I had to go up there and check in anyway. So went up there and sure enough, there was a very nice lodge. It had full service restaurant and I had heard that there was a good deck with an amazing sunset. So being the uh, photographer that I am, I had to be a sucker for a sunset and check it out. So. Here's a couple pics and videos from that evening on the deck. Well, I decided to retire a little early tonight. It had been a good day and had a little bit of file management to do and putting some picture files and video files away on the laptop and getting ready to take some pictures of Amica Cola Falls tomorrow morning.
Well, I could have spent another hour or two at those waterfalls, but I had to get back on the road and head towards Pigeon Mountain Wilderness Management Area, where I was going to meet up with the crew from Storyteller Overland to take some professional video of the truck for social media. By no means is this video professional. This is just rookie me filming, editing, and enjoying the process. I did my best to stay on the back roads to appreciate the Americana of the countryside. I pulled into a little town called Talking Rocks that had an old passenger train for a restaurant and a couple cool little shops. First little shop was kind of an antique trinket shop with a warm and inviting persona and a bunch of cool little gizmos. Pay attention to that little book called Indian Trail Trees, and we'll talk about that a little later in the video. There's also this little Jeep store next door that had Jeep paraphernalia, along with Life of Good t-shirts where they donate 10% of all profits to an organization helping children get through tough times through recreation and play in the great outdoors. Well, needless to say, you know I bought a couple t-shirts. Speaking of raw Americana, let me introduce you to Bart's Bait and Tackle. Cool little roadside stop on the middle of nowhere. And oh my God, the guy inside was just about as cool as a man can be. <laughs> What's your name, brother? You know that Joe Biden got everything under control. Look how much more money you made the last few years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody's busy. They're covered up. I can't get caught up. Watch it. They look at real funny. Ice cream and pie is good, but it has a downside. <laughs> you can say that again. Show that right there. Put it on that one. Oh, my goodness. My dad's going to shoot me. <laughs> I don't think I got one. I'll show you. Oh, my Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is 22? Uh, 22 Magnum. 22 Magnum. You know, when I was a kid, I had one of those AR, they called them AR-22s. Yeah, it, it was a little plastic uh, barrel gun, you know? Yeah. They, uh, that is, uh, that is cool. What, what, what brand is that? Uh, Chiapa. Chiapa. Never heard of it. Well, we spun yarns about weapons and the behavior of men. I thought to myself, how often does a complete stranger invite you into his space, treat you like a dear friend, and on top of that, he hands you a loaded weapon with no fear? <laughs> this is the America I search for while on these trips. Unfiltered, real people leading their best lives. I vow from this point forward to stop at the little places along the back roads, pay a little more for gas, and support the small guys doing their best to keep our culture alive. He shot, God almighty. I, yeah. I, I wasn't going to tell you. You had to put a full force <laughs> what it felt like and what it sounded like. You had to put a four, what, probably 30 pounds, huh? Well, you're the kind of people I like to meet on the road, sir. Well, thank you. It's nice meeting you. Well, you, uh, you too, my friend. What's your name? Buddy Callahan. Buddy Callahan. Nice. Heard of Dirty Harry? Yeah. That's my cousin. Oh, yeah? Did you see anything out here that looked like it might have been a crash? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, some 911 helpful citizen with a cell phone called in a crash and gave no description. Said it was in front of Barks. In front of Barks? Well, there wasn't an accident outside of Bart's Bait and Tackle, thank God, so I headed out on my way to Pigeon Mountain Wilderness Management Area. Pigeon Mountain was kind of unique to me as the mountains of northern Georgia were transitioning into flatlands, 
And the Pigeon Mountain stands alone on this flat land, offering a unique view of the surrounding area. My GoPro wasn't working, so I didn't get to show you the trip up the mountain, but it was a whiny little switchback, and I'm throwing in a little Google Earth clip here so you can get a, an idea of how that mountain elevates itself above the surrounding plateaus and gives you some pretty unique perspectives on the landscape. Well, I got to camp and decided to set things up and snuggle in for the day. It's not a whole lot to setting this rig up. Pull her in, take out a few things I put in the sink to be stable during travel, open up some windows, get some fresh air. And by the way, these are some awesome windows. These are true dual pane glass uh, insulated windows that uh, have infinite adjustability on the opening position. And, they work really well and they don't stripe up when you go down a, a road with branches rubbing up against them. Well, it took all about 10 minutes to get camp set up, so I decided to make me a little snack. The Fitcher Frigo refrigerator freezer combo allowed me the luxury of having some ice cream while living off grid. If anybody that's ever camped before knows that ice cream while you're camping is truly a treat. Ice cream on the trail. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna enjoy this. Oh yeah. Cooking with Crisco now. As I started downloading footage and getting the computer gear out, I was reminded of how blessed I was to have infinite power available to charge the multitude of things that I was using, including drones, GoPros, iPhones, iPads, laptops. It's just such a rewarding feeling having all that available while you're living off grid and moving down the road. With chores done and a little snack in my belly, I decided to go for a walk, see if I could take some pictures and familiarize myself with the campground. The campground was actually called Sawmill Lake Campground and was split into two areas, one for normal camping and one for horse camping. I camped in the horse camp area because I just wanted to kind of be away from the other people that were camping. But the campground area was beautiful. There's this big old oak tree that just stood out there in the middle. And man, I bet that thing could tell some stories. Mm -hmm. 
lot of the campsites were located close to the forest edge with good shade and good location. While I was out there, I watched this plane flying over and thought about how many times I stepped aboard those planes and trains and automobiles and thought, I'm truly blessed to be traveling in the way that I am. I was walking down the trail, I actually captured me finding a site of interest that uh, might interest y'all. I don't know if you remember, but back when we were at Bart's Bait and Tackle, there was a book that was called Indian Trail Trees. Well, I've seen these trees before and actually had them on my property, and they serve as trail markers to the Indians. They would tie saplings down to indicate travel routes. Well, I just saw it as a sign that I was on the right road, going in the right direction. The crew from Storyteller Overland showed up in their vans to plan a simple video shoot of the truck. These young men and women were pros with amazing camera gear. I learned a lot from these kids regarding filming and hopefully that will only help me get better at telling these stories. We got some shots before sundown and started a fire and did some additional cooking video around the campfire. It was a great night and refreshing to have some company. Thank you guys for all that you do. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines This thing where I belong I was ready to get on the road today. This was halfway through my trip and I was settling into a slower pace. It takes time to settle down from the busy world and I needed this little walkabout. The truck seemed so at home on the back roads. I think it was enjoying it as much as me. We were getting to know each other and I can only imagine how refined the experience could be after a true expedition of living in this vehicle over an extended period of time. It becomes your home, your transportation, your refuge, a safe space on wheels that yearns for exploration and adventure. What you give, you get to keep. So long, farewell, bye-bye. Let's have a toast for those lost old eyes. And my crooked little heart that seems so rebellious. This video is getting a little long, so I'm going to break it off here. We still have some of the best locations on this trip left to see, so if you could be so kind, like and subscribe to see the next video where we spend three more days traveling cross country and visiting epic locations. And don't forget, stay wild.